Hello, my name's Scott James from King's College London. Uh, I'm here just to very briefly introduce a new paper uh, that I've had published with uh, Lucia Quaglia from the University of Bologna in Regulation and Governance. Just share uh, my slides very briefly to introduce the paper. Uh, paper title is Epistemic Contestation in Interagency Conflict. What we're interested in is um, how and why investment fund regulation uh, hasn't been uh, significantly strengthened since uh, the financial crisis. We argue this is particularly interesting and a, a particularly interesting puzzle because shadow banking, of which investment funds uh, are broadly uh, sort of categorized, played such a critical role in arguably contributing to the financial crisis originally back in 2008 um, and exacerbating the crisis at the time, but also subsequently have continued to expand and, and large investment funds now uh, have really become some of the largest and most important uh, financial institutions in the in the financial system uh, and certainly rival the size and systemic importance of the largest global banks. Uh, our paper looks at US and EU efforts since 2008 to agree prudential standards, so tougher uh, financial standards for systemically important investment funds at both the national and international uh, levels and why those efforts have broadly failed over the past uh, decade. So we discount a number of different explanations. Uh, we discount uh, the explanation that this can be reduced to uh, disagreement between large financial jurisdictions, in this case, the United States and the EU, which is where most investment funds are based. In fact, prudential regulators were broadly agreed on the need for tougher rules uh, after 2010. We also discount transnational explanations, the, the claim that this is to do with the fragmentation or weakness of institutions at the global level, uh, regulatory standard setting bodies, uh, for the simple reason that we do see tougher rules, for example, in areas like derivatives, uh, where institutions are more fragmented. So uh, we argue that this can't uh, be the explanation by itself. We also discount financial power arguments on the grounds that investment funds simply lack the infrastructural and particularly the structural power that large global banks and other financial institutions do. Uh, for example, um, the argument uh, from a sort of asset management capitalism perspective, the fact that investment funds have become so large and so diversified that paradoxically they've actually undermined their own powers of exit uh, because of the, the market panic that this would, would induce. So we argue that they, those classic structural power arguments don't work in the same way for investment funds. We also discount bureaucratic explanations. We argue that uh, this goes some way to answering the puzzle, that there is a fundamental disagreement between prudential regulators and another set of regulators, that is securities markets regulators, who are traditionally responsible for regulating investment funds. But crucially, this can't be reduced to conventional arguments about bureaucratic rivalry, because actually what we would expect to see is securities regulators actually pushing for new prudential powers. And that's precisely what we don't see in this situation. So our explanation uh, or th brings three, I think, interesting insights. One is an interpretivist perspective, which views bureaucratic interests and ideas as grounded in a logic of practices. So we're interested in how bureaucratic agencies conceive uh, of their own interests and ideas through particular recursive everyday practices. And we try to unpack what we mean by that concept. Uh, that leads us to focus on epistemic contestation, the fact that these practices lead agencies to generate, affirm and defend distinct worldviews or interpretive frames. So again, how regulatory agencies understand the world around them, how they understand financial markets and financial institutions and how they deem it appropriate to regulate those markets and institutions are uh, defined, in, if you like, by these distinct interpretive uh, frames. But these are also a source of contestation and conflict, and this is where we bring our third insight in, which is to look at the way in which agencies assert epistemic authority through recursive practices. Things like claims to exclusive expertise, drawing jurisdictional boundaries, and particularly alliance building with other actors, which we'll come back to in a second. And the method we use is practice tracing, so not just mapping the process by which these regulatory developments took place, but the particular practices through which regulators and regulatory agencies set out to achieve their objectives and were ultimately thwarted. This is based on 
a uh, series of interviews we did with practitioners um, and regulators. So in the paper we set out systematically uh, through a close reading of uh, documentation, uh, the distinct interpretive frames, regulatory frames that different sets of regulators have in this field. So we distinguish between prudential regulators and securities markets regulators, and we try and set out systematically why they have very distinct sets of objectives. They use different sets of instruments and those instruments derive from those objectives. That in turn gives rise to different sets of regulatory strategies, and then that these are embedded in distinct sets of institutions. So this sets up, uh, we argue, uh, this, this space for epistemic contestation and conflict. Our argument um, in a nutshell is that central banks and prudential regulators located predominantly in central banks and bank regulatory agencies, particularly around the Federal Reserve, the ECB, the Bank of England, push very strongly to extend prudential regulation to large investment funds to manage what they perceive to be the systemic risk uh, of a run on large investment funds following the crisis. Securities regulators, predominantly in the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission in the United States, but and to a lesser extent ESMA at the EU level, uh, resist these efforts uh, and are very keen to defend conduct and transaction-based uh, approach to regulating funds. So they have a very different view of how investment funds should be regulated. They should be about regulating transactions rather than entities, and that's the fundamental epistemic uh, division between the two. This issue is es uh, then escalated to the international level where you see these epistemic divisions being mirrored and playing out. Uh, and our fundamental insight is that securities regulators very skillfully deploy a set of recursive practices over time to resist change and to resist this, this powerful push for prudential regulation. One is by drawing uh, claims to exclusive expertise, literally saying that central banks uh, do not understand how investment funds work and how securities markets work, very explicitly saying that. Drawing jurisdictional boundaries, saying that, you know, again, central banks need to keep off our epistemic turf. And very skillfully building alliances through existing networks with the investment fund industry itself, with whom securities regulators already have uh, fairly, fairly well embedded uh, networks and alliances. So it's drawing on those uh, those resources. The outcome then is a failure to agree international standards for GCFI designation. That is, uh, what central banks wanted was the ability to designate large investment funds as globally systemically important financial institutions, because that would then allow prudential regulators to impose a whole series of, uh, of much tougher rules and those standards, or the, the, there's a failure to agree those standards. So I'll stop there. I uh, hope you enjoy the paper and thank you very much for listening.